some mornings you perhaps find that your car is covered in dust. Well, it's quite likely to be a fine layer of sand from the Sahara Desert, hundreds of kilometers away. Sand particles in the Sahara are disturbed by strong winds and drawn up into the atmosphere. These enormous plumes of dust are then carried off by the winds, often covering large areas of southern Europe. This almost invisible enemy can cause serious health problems such as respiratory diseases, but it can also cause problems with solar energy production, an increasingly important clean and renewable alternative to oil. Desert dust reduces the amount of radiation reaching the solar mirrors, which transform sunlight into energy. The European Monitoring Atmospheric Composition and Climate Project MAC2 keeps power station managers informed of the frequency at which a certain location is affected by these large dust clouds. In the near future, it's expected to provide daily updates and five-day forecasts to show the dust's impact on solar radiation. Data on solar irradiation is crucial when deciding the location of future solar power plants. What we see on the mirrors are dust and aerosols from the desert. Those are harmful to our facilities because they reduce the incoming solar energy impacting on our system. If we know a few days in advance that a dust storm is coming, we'll store surplus energy so that it can be used on the days when there isn't sufficient solar energy to operate the installation. At the moment, this storage works with pressurized water, so there are kinds of big cans that will store the water at a very high pressure and a very high temperature. When we want to discharge this energy, we'll use the steam present in these containers to power the electricity production systems. But how is it possible to foresee the movements of desert dust? Here at the University of Sofia Antipolis, close to Nice, researchers from Transvala, a company specializing in research into solar energy, measure the quantity of solar irradiation that reaches the ground. In this room, large screens follow the desert dust as seen by satellites. Mathematical models and algorithms provided in the framework of the MAC2 project can then predict its movement. Today, weather forecasts have progressed greatly and are able to predict the desert sun that is raised and taken by the wind at high altitude to Europe, as seen here. These models are actually numerical. They run on very large computers and give us the transparency of the atmosphere. Since the more sun there is, the less the atmosphere is transparent. They also forecast what will become of the sun, how it will move in time, in three, four or five days. Solar energy is becoming increasingly more important as a source of renewable power generation. So knowing in advance when a dust storm is coming from the desert is crucial.